Dr. Arian here from the Movement Paradigm. Today I wanted to talk about SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and how it is most often underdiagnosed as a source of irritable bowel syndrome. Before I jump in, please make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dr. Arian Missimer, and don't forget to hit that alert button to stay tuned for new content every week. Many individuals have a diagnosis of irritable bowel syndrome. They have been given at some point in their lives by a doctor and they are just trying to manage it on their own with no real um, solution to addressing the root cause. And in most cases, irritable bowel syndrome is in fact SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So when you are diagnosed with IBS, it's really important to make sure that you get the proper testing done and determine if this is one of your root causes. If you're experiencing anxiety and depression, if you're experiencing bloating, digestive issues, constipation, diarrhea, abdominal pain, uh, just an overall puffiness and, and discomfort around the abdomen, even si such symptoms as heartburn and acid reflux, really important to get evaluated. And SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, is essentially when there is a dysbiosis and an imbalance of the good and bad bacteria in the gut. So testing for SIBO. So you will have a breath test, which will determine if you have methane or hydrogen gas. You will do a breath test over a series of a few hours where you ingest lactulose. After you ingest lactulose, depending on how lactulose ferments in your gut, will determine which gas is produced. And this would indicate whether or not you have SIBO. So if you have a diagnosis of SIBO or IBS and you're in the process of trying to determine how you can feel better, it's highly recommended to go on a FODMAP diet. So FODMAP is fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, and polyols. And essentially these are hard to digest fibers and sugars and therefore do not pass through the small intestine well. So you would be encouraged to be on a low FODMAP plan, which the first part of the low FODMAP is a complete elimination of any moderate to high FODMAP foods. After the elimination phase, which can be anywhere from two to six weeks, I recommend typically four, then you can begin a reintroduction. So you would reintroduce one FODMAP food at a time and see how your body tolerates it. After you've done that, you can personalize your FODMAP plan and really determine what foods really are aggravating you, contributing to some kind of bloating or flatulence or abdominal pain, anything. But the first goal of the program is really to decrease inflammation, decrease symptoms, uh, really try to settle your system down, and then you can begin to transition into a personalization of the food plan. In the colon, the high FODMAP foods will ferment and cause gas, and in the small intestine, they will pull water, causing bloating and stretch in the intestinal area. So after you've determined you may have SIBO, after you have initiated a FODMAP plan, of course you want to follow a 5-R protocol for gut restoration, so that would be replacing with digestive enzymes, re-inoculating with good bacteria, probiotics, prebiotics, replacing any nutrients that you may be deficient in, and also rebalancing your lifestyle factors. So after you have worked through a 5-R protocol, there is a chance that you may need to take an antibiotic, uh, whether that's herbal or that's a conventional uh, antibiotic, and that will help to kill the bacteria and begin to rebalance. So some people will definitely need to do that. The research shows that it's pretty equal whether you take a, an antibiotic or the herbal antibiotic, but it does depend on if your body is ready to support it and if you are well enough to be able to handle the antibiotic. 
So in summary, if you are a person that has had a diagnosis of IBS or you are dealing with a lot of abdominal symptoms and you really want to get to the bottom of it, it's really important to consider SIBO as one of the possibilities and one of the big root causes, whether that's attributing to anxiety and depression, whether that is attributing to all of your digestive issues. Uh, nonetheless, you want to make sure that you're using this as a possible diagnosis to rule in or rule out. And once again, treat the root cause as opposed to just treating the symptoms. As always, thank you so much for joining me today and your continued support. If this was helpful for you, please make sure to hit that like button, make sure to share it with friends and family, and of course, as always, stay tuned for new content every single week.